Okay, tonight is kind of going to be a shorter video for you folks. Now, the first story is probably the main reason you touched on this video, and that is an augmented reality Game of Thrones experience. I, honestly, I'm not sure what to call it, but experience seems like the best phrase. Anyway, if for those of you who are unfamiliar with the phrase augmented reality, it could easily be defined as the mixing of, well, regular reality and, and virtual reality. The best example I could probably give you is the AR mode of Pokemon Go, where the creatures you'll find in your travels are going to be pixelated through your phone onto the real world. Now, as far as this Game of Thrones experience is concerned, augmented reality is going to refer to all of the White Walkers, Rabid Wolves, or whatever else you may find in your travels throughout this adventure. You're going to be tasked with killing them, attacking them, doing whatever, and, you know, going throughout a general adventure. Now, the problem with this, though, is the simple fact that there are two ways you can access this product. The first is unfortunately a product that I touched on in an earlier video about the AT&T and AT&T Magic Leap AR headset which is price tagged at over $2,000. The other one is a little bit more on the affordable side but still erring more towards a, a commercial audience rather than a consumer based one because this this other product is the HTC Vive Focus which is earmarked at over which is earmarked at $600 for the basic version 640 for a different color don't know why you would need an extra $40 to paint it blue or white or whatever and the HTC Vive Focus Plus or Pro can't remember but the Pro Edition is going to run you an extra $100. But even still, I don't know about you, but I personally don't have six to $700 to blow on an augmented reality headset, which may not even have that many experiences on it. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. It, apply whatever value you have to that. Now, on top of that, there's also the fact that you will need a high-end system in order to even process what is, what is trying to be created by this experience. So, you know, probably better to keep it for commercial use for right now until the, the price tag can go down a little bit. But that's just my perspective. Let's move on to the next story, shall we? The next video is a little bit on the shorter side. Now this one is just going to cover the fact that Upload VR has released a, sh a short list of VR game releases for the month of April 2019. Now most of these have already been released, so I'll just give you the ones that haven't been. And the, of course the list to the, the link to the full list is going to be in the description down below. The ones that haven't been released yet include Gadgeteer for, you know, all the PC VR options. And for PlayStation VR, we have Table of Tales, Ghost Giant, both of those on April 16th, and Jupiter and Mars releasing on the 22nd. Now, Gadgeteer is going to be released on the 23rd. That one is simply going to be for the HTC Vive. The next story is a little bit on the more somber side. It is simply the fact that newspaper publishers like New York Times, Time Magazine, and, and the like, they all believe that VR is this niche, this, this is this small niche that is unlikely to grow and not really worth their time. Now, 
as per an industry report that was also that I also put out yesterday or recently, uh, that is not necessarily the case. While it does have a relatively pricier entry point, it is not it, it is not going to fizzle out as they would suggest. But rather, VR as as an industry is likely to grow many times over as it happens. So that being said, it <laughs> it could easily be said that these newspaper publishers are a little behind the times, but then again, I would just be stating the obvious because, well, newspapers have been, it, people could argue that newspapers have been dead for a while. So, take that as you will, and the link to that article, rather frustrating article, or stupid one, may I say, is going to be in the description down below. Now this last story is a real gem. Okay, so according to Tsubasa Sakaguchi, the director of Nintendo Labo, the VR kit that they are going to be releasing in the morning, which has experiences debuting with Super Mario Odyssey and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, both of those getting VR updates. The VR kit is going to be built not only towards the VR experience that is going to come in the games, but also the process of constructing the, constructing the kit and learning how everything works. One thing he also did touch on, though, was that this... All, all the experiences that you will enjoy in the game will not be limited to purely VR. And you'll be able to... That may... That may bring the experience out onto the main screen. Which kind of is the case when you think about it for uh, third-party viewers on the PlayStation VR. Yeah, you're watching everything happen on screen in your headset. But as you're doing everything, everything that you're seeing is also being displayed onto the, the primary monitor slash TV that, that you do most of your viewing on. So, being, with that said, the $40 price point, which is a heck of a lot more affordable than most others you could find, is going to be it, it, it's honestly just going to be a great way for everybody to feel a lot more invested in VR and for this to grow into less of the niche category that Time Magazine wants to put it in. So if, if you guys feel like checking it out or if you haven't gotten the chance to enjoy VR yet, now's your chance. So the VR the VR starter kit starting at forty dollars. The switch is starting at two hundred, I think. And Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, entirely playable in VR, by the way. That you can find for forty dollars, I think. Um, so I think that about wraps up the news. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.